Psalms chapter number 9, begin reading verse 16. The Bible says, The Lord is known by the judgment which he executeth. The wicked is snared in the work of his own hands. Higion, Selah. That word Selah means to stop and think about this. Higion means to stop and meditate on it. Verse 17 says, The wicked shall be turned into hell, and all the nations that forget God. For the needy shall not always be forgotten. The expectation of the poor shall not perish forever. Arise, O Lord, let not man prevail. Let the heathen be judged in thy sight. Put them in fear, O Lord, that the nations may know themselves to be but men. Selah. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. We thank you for the good singing. Thank you for the good Sunday school lesson. Thank you for being a good God. Lord, even though our heart's desire is that your house would be filled, and that your people who are having to watch via live stream would be able to be here in person, Lord, we are thankful that we still do have an option where folks can hear what thus saith the Lord. Lord, it's not like being here. It's different. But Lord, we're, we know that you're able to do all things, that nothing is impossible with you, and that, God, you can take our feeble efforts even through a live stream and touch somebody's heart. Father, our desire is for you to be glorified and magnified, for you to be exalted, for folks to truly learn what it is to worship and worship you on a daily basis because you are worthy to be praised. Now, Father, I pray that you would bless the reading of the Word of God. I pray that you'd use this unworthy vessel. And I pray that, Lord, as the message goes forth, it would touch hearts and lives. I pray if anyone is watching that does not know you in the free pardon of sins, does not know what them songs that were just sung are about, I pray that, Lord, through this they would come to the saving knowledge of Christ They'd repent of their sins and trust Christ as Lord and Savior. God, I pray for those that are watching, that are saved, Lord, that uh, are living in these trying times, and Lord, are faced with opposition, are faced with all kinds of things in their lives. Some are faced with maybe losing their job. Some are faced with, Lord, maybe uh, 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 not being able to do what they normally would do and certainly not be able to come to church uh, Some can't leave their state. Some can't even go to a grocery store. And Lord, a lot of things going on. But God, I know that you are sovereign. You are on the throne. We do know that this did not catch you by surprise. Uh, Father, I pray you'd minister help to folks where they are. Those that are struggling, you'd strengthen them. Those that are low, you'd lift them up. Those that are weak and their faith is weak, that their faith would grow and they would be be strong in the Lord. Uh, God, whatever is needed, I pray you touch hearts and lives. Uh, Father, just uh, use us now to glorify your namesake. Well, thank you for what you do, for it's in the holy and wonderful name of the Lord Jesus we ask these things. Amen and amen. I want to draw your attention as a way of invitation or introduction to several things in these verses. I want you to notice, uh, 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 as David is uh, inspired to pin down these words, uh, he gives us the reputation of God. Uh, The Bible says in verse 16, The Lord is known uh, by the judgment which he executeth. Now I know our good friend Joe Osteen uh, will tell you that the Lord is uh, known by being a God of love and giving a positive attitude, and you can be positive and change your environment and change your world. Uh, And I know that uh, a lot of people that don't go to church, uh, they're quick to give you an opinion of who God is, uh, and that if God was so loving and so forgiving, why would he ever put anybody into hell? Uh, And God certainly isn't a God of judgment. uh, And don't judge me. Because the Bible says not to judge me. Uh, 
Now, uh, let me just uh, remark on a few things. Uh, uh, the Bible does tell us that all judgments committed unto Christ uh, and that we're not to judge another man's servant. Uh, and the Bible says, Judge not lest ye be judged. Uh, but the Bible also says uh, that you'll know a tree by the fruit that it bears. Uh, I don't have to judge an orange tree to see if it's an orange tree. Uh, there's oranges popping out all over it. Uh, and I don't have to judge you to be a Christian or not. Uh, if you're a Christian, Christ is going to pop out all over you uh, and folks are going to know it. Uh, and as far as God being a God of love, He's more than a God of love. Uh, the Bible says, uh, for God is love. Uh, and can I say, uh, uh, God is love. Uh, and God is a God of grace. Uh, and God is merciful. Uh, and if you embrace the truth of God's Word, it is positive. Uh, uh, can I say, when God tells me I'm a sinner, uh, that's positive positive, because uh, I'd never be able to get to God and trust Him as Savior uh, until I found out I was a sinner. Uh, hey, uh, and when God tells me even if I'm saved that I'm living wicked, uh, that's positive, uh, because if I know I'm wicked, uh, I know I need to get back to the fountain and get cleaned up. Uh, uh, can I say, uh, uh, the things of God are positive, my dear friends, but notice the reputation of God. David says this about God. I'd much rather believe what the Bible says about God than what Joe Osteen, John MacArthur Jr., uh, 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 Joyce Myers, uh, Beth Moore, uh, or anybody else trying to sell books. This is what the Bible says. The Lord is known by the judgment which he executed. Can I say the reputation of God is this? God is a God of judgment. Uh, uh, can I say when he comes back to this earth the next time, uh, he's coming back on a white horse uh, and a sharp two-edged sword's going to go out of his mouth uh, and on his thigh uh, is his name written uh, and he come to make war. Uh, and can I say uh, when he's done making war, uh, uh, the blood of the battle uh, is going to rise all the way to the bit of the horse's mouth. Uh, he's not coming back to lovey dove around with you huh? he's coming to judge the wicked huh? and judge the sinful huh? can I say in the Bible there are five judgments huh? and the child of God's going to stand at the judgment seat of Christ huh? and give an account of the deeds done in his body huh? whether they be good or evil after he's gotten saved huh? But there is a judgment uh, uh, described in Revelation 20 uh, called the Great White Throne Judgment. Uh, and that judgment uh, is for the dead uh, and the wicked dead, both small and great, uh, those that rejected Christ. Uh, and at that day, uh, every sin they ever committed is going to be revealed. Uh, they're not going to be there where God's going to weigh the good points and bad points. Uh, for the Bible says there's none that do it good. Uh, no, not one. Uh, there's none that's righteous uh, no not one friend uh, uh, that day uh, they'll be sentenced because of their sin uh, uh, the beauty of what we'll celebrate next week uh, is Jesus died for our sin uh, and he rose again to redeem us uh, and friend if you don't let Jesus pay for your sins uh, you're going to have to pay for your own forever in a place called hell uh, the reputation of God is God judges Man, and can I say he's angry with the wicked every day? Take that, Joe Osteen. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. But those that reject his son, God's angry at them. The Bible says it's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of an angry God. We see the reputation of God. Notice the restitution for the wicked. The Bible says in verse 16, The wicked is snared in the work of his own hands. Can I say, sinners sin because they like it. And what they are doing is uh, weaving more and more and more snares of their own life. The only way out of your sin is not you turning over a new leaf because they're in a new leaf good enough. The only way out of your sin is the blood of Jesus Christ. But look what verse 17 says. The wicked shall be turned into hell and all the nations that forget God. The Bible didn't say the wicked shall be turned into purgatory where they can be prayed out. 
The Bible didn't say the wicked will get a second chance. The Bible didn't say uh, 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 one day hell will be burnt out and, and the wicked will get out. The Bible says the wicked shall be turned into hell. Hmm? Hell, a place of damnation and everlasting fire and all nations that forget God. Notice, if you will, the renumeration of the lowly. Look at verse 18. For the needy shall not always be forgotten. The expectation of the poor shall not perish forever. Now, can I say this is not dealing with the econ economical state of people. This is dealing with the meek and lowly, those that have humbled themselves and trusted in God. Can I say a lot of times in life throughout the ages, it looks like those that have been God's children have suffered, have perished, have had to uh, deal with a lot of things, and it looks like they're always dealt a bad hand. But God doesn't forget their low estate. Hmm? And can I say, one of these days, God's going to reward the meek and the lowly. And then we see the request of the psalmist. Look what the psalmist, look what David is requesting of God. Look at verse 19. Arise, O Lord, let not man prevail. Let the heathen be judged in thy sight. Put them in fear, O Lord, that the nations may know themselves to be but men. Now can I say any time a preacher or a Christian makes a statement that I'm about ready to make, the world gets absolutely crazy. They get sideways, they get their panties in a wad, they get so upset but can I say, a lot of the course of events that have happened in this world, not only in the, in the last few months, but in the last few years, have been judgments of God. Some of the horrible storms, some of the very uh, uh, plagues and pestilence and famines. The Bible said in the last days they'd come. And the whole reason those things come upon mankind is not to harden the heart of man, but to get man to realize they are but men that is out of their control and they quit looking around and start looking up to God who is in control. The psalmist is praying for very things like what we are experiencing in our country right now that men would realize this is bigger than them and they must turn to God and trust God to get them out of this mess. Uh, can I say it's a plea from David for punishment. Verse 19. Arise, O Lord, and let not, not man be, prevail. Let the heathen be judged in thy sight. He's pleading for God to punish men who are against God. It's a plea for panic. Look in verse 20. Put them in fear, O Lord. I've never seen any time in, in my 56 and a half years of living where people are afraid like they are today. Keep in mind, I've lived through Vietnam. I've lived through the oil crisis of the 70s. I lived through the economy breakthrough in the 70s. I lived through Reagan coming and helping us out of the economy. I lived through the, uh, uh, the wickedness of Bill Clinton in the White House. I've lived through recessions. I've lived through uh, 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 the Bush eras making a, uh, us a, uh, a candidate for the New World Order, the Patriot Act. I've lived uh, through the Obama, whatever that was for eight years. I've lived through all of it. But I've never seen people afraid like they are today. Can I say, Christian and I was at Menards yesterday, couldn't hardly find a parking spot. Walked in, people in masks, people in gloves, people afraid. People afraid to leave their houses. People are glued to the TV 24-7 to find out how many people have died. Can I say, uh, uh, it's under 10,000 in America, but can I say this, during the same period, uh, nearly 750,000 people have died since January. How come we're only worried about these 10,000? Because you've listened to them talk about this is the one. It is so contagious that it's going to kill you. They don't tell you about the, uh, the innovations through the platelets the blood, uh, in the bloodstream that's helping people recover from it. They don't tell you about uh, 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 the malaria drug that's helping people recover from it. They don't tell you how they're even taking CPAP machines instead of ventilators and helping people recover from it. They don't tell you of all the inroads. Uh, they don't tell you of the people that's had it and never even uh, had to take medicine. They've been able to go through their natural immune system overcome it. Uh, they don't tell you all the good news that's happening. 
They want to keep people in fear, and a lot of you have bought the ticket. Can I say it's a plea for perspective? In verse 20, he says, Put them in fear, O Lord, that the nations may know themselves to be but men. I'm sure appreciative the president called for a national day of prayer. And I'm appreciative that he has said that churches need to get back to being churches. But unfortunately, there's a bunch of liberal governors that haven't realized they're just men. The psalmist is pleading for them to realize this thing is much bigger than them and out of their control and somebody needs to get God on the scene. You know who's going to get God on the scene? God's people. That's right. I'm interested today in verse 17. This verse has been preached many times over the years. It says, The wicked shall be turned into hell, and all the nations that forget God. You know, as we are here in 2020, we have lost sight that America was founded because people said they would not live in a state-mandated religious country to where you had to worship the way the state told you to worship. People put their lives in jeopardy getting in small boats to cross the Atlantic Ocean, never knowing if they'd ever make it, but they took that with their Bibles in their hands, and they came to America, and America was established uh, for the freedom of religion and the freedom of worship God. Do you realize our very Constitution guarantees us that right? Do you realize Deo Christian principles is what this country was founded on? This country was founded on the oracles and principles of the Word of God. Uh, and I say America was built uh, not on the backbone of ty uh, tyranny. Uh, America was built uh, on bowed knees of people praying and seeking after God. Uh, America's always been a godly nation. Uh, uh, but as we sit here today, uh, 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 those uh, 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 in America have forgotten who God is. Uh, and for the first time in our nation's history, uh, uh, our very churches are under attack where we can't even worship on Easter. America has forgotten God, as has most of the nations of the world. I want to preach on this thought today. I want to preach on nations that forget God. Nations that forget God. You say, this is going to be popular preaching. I don't care if it's popular or not. It's right. Amen. Can I say a nation has forgotten God when, first of all, their sacrilege throughout the nation the Bible says in Judges chapter number 10 and verse 6 and the children of Israel did evil again in the sight of the Lord and served Balaam a false god and Ashtoreth a false goddess and let me just sidetrack right there and tell you who Ashtoreth is can I say uh, she first was called Samaris and then she was called Ashtoreth you later find her at Ephesus named Diana, and there was a whole temple where they worshipped her. Can I say, uh, 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 this very goddess uh, is a goddess that has a child. It's mother-child worship. Uh, it's been since Ceramus uh, in Genesis chapter 10 in Babylon. Uh, it is the element uh, of all uh, uh, idol worship. Uh, and can I say, in America, you're pressed to not go to any town uh, where there's a place that calls itself a church, uh, and you won't find Astrid standing outside of it uh, holding a child uh, when with a halo over both their heads. Uh, there are people who pray to Astrid uh, oh, every day of their lives. Uh, they don't call her Astrid today. Uh, they call her Mary. Uh, uh, listen, uh, uh, the worship of Mary didn't happen because uh, Jesus' mother's name was Mary. Uh, it's always been in pagan religion, uh, and it's still pagan today, uh, and it's still running rampant throughout our nation. Uh, throughout the world and the children of Israel did evil again in the sight of the Lord and served Balaam and Astrid 
the gods of Syria, the gods of Zidon, the gods of Moab, and the gods of the children of Ammon, uh, and the gods of the Philistines, and forsook the Lord and served him not. Uh, when uh, 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 Joshua led God's people over into uh, uh, Canaan land, uh, the very fundamental principle of God was, uh, do not worship the gods of that land. Uh, let them know who the true and living God is. And Israel began to worship all the pagan gods. Can I say, George Washington, the first president of the United States of America, uh, uh, the man who our country wanted to name a king, and he said, no, we'll have a presidency. Uh, uh, the very one they wanted him uh, uh, buried underneath the Capitol building, but he refused uh, uh, to be heralded as anything other than a man. George Washington said, uh, America is a Christian nation. But as we sit here today, you find mosques throughout the land. You find uh, Hindus throughout the land. You find a, a Buddha worshipers and Shinto and all the Asian gods uh, throughout the land. Uh, 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 Vasti, and uh, I've already mentioned Mary, and there's all kinds of paganism in our land. Uh, and they say, well, we have freedom of religion. It was never intended for America to have all the Eastern religions and all that. That's all man-made because man forgot God and began to worship other gods. Jeremiah 16, 11, the Bible says, Then shalt thou say unto them, Because your fathers have forsaken me, saith the Lord, and have walked after other gods, and served them, and have worshipped them, and have forsaken me, and not kept my law. Uh, uh, I'm telling you, uh, nations that forget God uh, fall into sacrilege. Uh, Romans chapter number 1 and verse 21 says, Because that when they knew God, uh, they glorified him not as God, uh, neither were thankful, uh, but because Came vain in their imaginations and their foolish heart was darkened uh, professing themselves to be wise they became fools uh, uh, friends are uh, 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 institutions of learning uh, uh, say that if you believe in a higher power named God you're weak minded uh, uh, they use the education they puff themselves up uh, they've kicked God out of our schools they've kicked God out of society uh, look where that's gotten us today uh, oh somebody go get the Lord uh, the Bible goes on and says uh, uh, because uh, when they knew God they glorified him not as God uh, and it ends and says they changed the glory of the incorruptible God uh, into the image of corruptible man uh, and the birds and four footed beasts and creeping things uh, uh, today America worships everything but God America worships athletes America worships actors America worships the almighty dollar. America worships uh, the aspiration of you can become whatever you want to. They call it the American dream. You know who America doesn't worship? The Lord Jesus Christ. Mm. See, in America, you're allowed to say God. But you start mentioning the name of Jesus, you upset some folks. Obama said we were weak-minded, gun-toting, God-believing folks. Hillary looked at us as deplorables. Uh, I'm telling you, uh, uh, liberal governors throughout this union uh, are, are, are listening to guys like Cuomo instead of the president. Uh, and they're saying, it's bad, it's bad, it's bad. Uh, you can't go to church. Uh, you know where we need to be? Uh, we need to be in the house of God, uh, seeking God's face, uh, longing for His presence, because uh, America's being turned into hell. Uh, there's hell going on in our streets. The opioid problem, uh, 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 the problems in the American households, uh, uh, the destruction of the family. Uh, 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 you look at all the war going on in our streets, uh, black on black crime, uh, uh, black on white crime, uh, white on black crime. Uh, you look at all the prejudice, uh, all the racism, uh, uh, then you throw in a virus here and a virus there. Uh, uh, friend, America's in uh, terrible shape because America's forgotten God. Uh, can I say, a nation's forgot God will be given to sacrilege. Can I say, nations that forget God, you'll find them always embracing sexual perversion. The Bible says in Leviticus 18.22, Thou shalt not lie with mankind as with womankind. It is an abomination. Can I say, sin is transgression of the law. 
and abominations what turns the stomach of God and makes him sick. And he destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah because they were given to sexual perversion. And I say in Romans chapter number 1, the Apostle Paul inspired to write this in verse 26. For this God, cause God gave them up to vile affections. Even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. And likewise also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lust one toward another, men with men, working that which is unseemly. Uh, 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 friend, you can't put two men together and come up with a baby. That's very unseemly. Uh, 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 the Bible says, And receiving in themselves that recompense uh, uh, of the error which was meet. Uh, and even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient uh, who knowing the judgment of God uh, they that which commit such things are worthy the de of, what, of death uh, not only do the same but have pleasure in them that do them can I say in America we've been given to sexual perversion used to what was done in, in the uh, uh, back alleys and in the closets of America is now on public display. They're thumbing their nose at God and anybody that stands against it and they expect you to like it and, and embrace it. You can't watch a TV show without having homosexuals on it. You can't go to a movie without it. You can't get a news uh, uh, brief on people where they don't pull one out of a closet somewhere talking about whatever. Huh? I'm telling you what, it's a learned lifestyle. It is not how God made them. How come every prissy-panted boy that claims to be queer has to talk with a list and prance around with his rear end stuck up in the air? Huh? That's a, that's a learned habit. God didn't make uh, men to walk around like that. He didn't make women. Women don't walk around with a little prissy lisp in their voice. Why do they get that? They've seen somebody that did it one time. They thought that was something, and they all started doing it. Just like every rap singer gets up and sings with his pants halfway down his rear end, making them little uh, gestures with his hand and the neck. Now every rap singer does it. They think it's cool, huh? Yeah. It's a learned habit or learned trait. Yeah. It's not what God put in them. Right. Now we've got to put up with the LBGT, ZBF, BFD, and everything else in the world. It's all perverted. Sure is. And the more America embraces it, the more America is being turned into hell. Right now, you got school counselors telling children uh, 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 that they're homosexual. They start putting it in the minds of young kids that you're a woman trapped in a man's body, and then they'll go through uh, uh, being transgendered. What they're not telling you is how many of those transgenders that go full-fledged and have the surgery commit suicide. Because they thought about changing the outside would help what's really eating them out at the inside. Inside, deep down inside, they know they're going against nature. And when they get to full transformation, it doesn't help what's on the inside. It doesn't, it's not the magic wand that makes all their problems go away. They, they intensify now. They're trying to live a lie and be something God didn't create them to be. And the suicide rate is astronomical. Can I say, we're finding it everywhere in the streets of America. America's being turned into hell. Can I say this? Every nation in history that fully embraced sexual perversion, God destroyed very swiftly. Nations that forget God, you'll find in those nations there's no sanctity of life. The Bible says in Jeremiah 32, 35, And they built the high places of Baal, which are in the valley of the son of Hinnom, to cause their sons and their daughters to pass through the fire unto Molech, a false god, which I commanded them not, neither came it into my mind that they should do this abomination to cause Judah to sin. Israel becomes so pagan and full of so much sacrilege they were taking their very babies, their sons and their daughters that God had blessed their home with, and they were offering them up as sacrifices unto a false god. They were burning them on an altar to Molech. No 
respect for the sanctity of life. Murdering their children to please a false god. Can I say, for 40 years America's been offering up children to all kinds of things, all kinds of altars. They're selling out their children. Some of them do it through video games. Some of them do it through TV. They let that be their babysitter. Some of it do it by getting them involved in every activity so they don't have to deal with them. Some of them are letting grandma, grandpa raise them because they just don't want to deal with them. But can I say, there's been nearly 50 million aborted because the mother didn't want them. Can I say, in this day and age, if you don't want to have a child, there's all kinds of ways where you don't have to have a child. Best way is abstinence. Wait till you get married. But can I say, they're aborting them and aborting them and aborting them. And who is crying on behalf of those poor babies? You know what the Bible says in Jeremiah 1.5? This is God talking to his prophet. Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. When's it a, when's it a human being? The moment it's conceived. Hmm? And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee, and I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. Yep. Who knows? Maybe the next great evangelist that would have changed the world was aborted. Mm. Can I say? It's a crying shame, and you know that a nation's forgot God where there's no sanctity of life. They don't care about infants. You've got wicked politicians saying they can all the way, go all the way and be born, come through the birth process, and then you can go ahead and murder it. It's, not, it's just a fetus. Some of them say you can wait till the head's crowned and you can uh, suck out its brains and let it be born dead. Mm. It's not a life. That's not what God said. But it's not only kids and children. We're euthanizing adults. And you see... Nobody ever realized all modern medicine would do is cause people to live longer. And that baby boom at age is sucking the Social Security dry because the politicians have robbed our Social Security for about 50 years to pay for all their liberal programs. And now people are living longer and they don't know how we're going to make a, a, a ends meet. Uh, and uh, they're withholding care from them. Uh, one of the uh, politicians that was running on the Democratic Party said, uh, just withhold care from the elderly uh, under this new mandated uh, health care they want to put in. Uh, say they've lived a good life, just let them die. Wow. Say, I'd never withhold health care from mom or dad or grandma or grandpa but you'll shove them off in a nursing home wait for them to die so you can have all their stuff there's no appreciation of the sanctity of life I'll tell you how wicked these liberal governors are they're shutting down churches they're keeping ab abortion clinics open that's essential you know what's essential to me being able to meet with God's people you know what's essential to me the Bible I'm telling you America's headed to hell and all nations that forget God. Can I say this? Nations that forget God always have a state that mandates how you're to worship. In Daniel chapter 6, I just preached on this not long ago. The Bible says, verse 7, All the presidents of the kingdom, the governors, the princes, the counselors, and captains, sounds like the whole government to me. Huh? says, have consulted together to establish a royal statute and to make a firm decree that whosoever shall ask a petition of any god or man for 30 days. Didn't they say we're shut down to the end of April? Hmm? Save of thee, O king, shall be cast into a den of lions. The Bible says in Daniel 3, 2, I won't read all of it, you know the story. Nebuchadnezzar the king sent together to, here we go again, the princes, the governors, the captains, the judges, the treasurers, the counselors, the sheriffs, all the rulers of the province, sound like the government, to come to the dedication of the image which Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up. You know the story. If they didn't bow down and worship the image, they were thrown into a fiery furnace. Three Hebrews went. I'm telling you, we're living a day and age 
where people have ignored what the Constitution says, they've ignored what Holy Writ says, the Scriptures. Even in the state of Kentucky, the state of Kentucky separation of church and state is even stronger than our uh, uh, the, uh, First Amendment of our Constitution of the United States. And even as late as the Patriot Act was enforced, uh, it was told that we could worship uh, not based on the mandate of a governor, but based on the co our own conscience. Uh, and our conscience says the Bible says that we're to come together. But our governor says we can't. Or we'll face the consequences. You'll go to jail. Put Christians in jail and let evil men abort babies and get away with murder. In California, they're releasing criminals, even some guilty of rape and murder because they don't want them to catch the virus, huh? but they don't care about the safety of the citizens. But the state is telling us how we're to worship, and they say, well, as long as you've got live stream, we're not shutting you down. Hogwash. And our sorry, uh, uh, backboneless, faithless uh, governor claims to be a Christian. You're not a Christian, governor, if you sanction the abortion of babies because it goes against the Bible. Uh, you're not a Christian uh, if you sanction legalized gambling. It goes against the Bible. Uh, you're not a Christian, governor, uh, if you sanction uh, uh, the sale of alcohol in liquor stores and closed churches. Uh, uh, you're not a Christian, governor, uh, if you ignore the Bible. Uh, and you have handcuffed uh, 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 the uh, uh, arms of Christians who want to raise their hands and worship unto God in their local assemblies. You're not a Christian. No, you're not. Mm, I know what you say. Well, my grandfather was a Baptist pastor. Well, your Baptist pastor grandfather wasn't as good as my grandfather because my grandfather told me to be in church. Yeah. Why aren't you in church, governor, on your face before God, pleading for him to move on our great state? Because you're not a Christian. You're a hypocrite. Yeah. You need to get right with God. Amen. Take that to the bank. This nation's on its way to hell, and so are wicked men like you. Can I say this? Nations are turned into hell because they've forgotten God. They're filled with sacrilege, sexual perversion, ignore the sanctity of life. You got the state mandating how we're to worship. It's all wicked. Paul said this, no, also in the last days perilous times shall come. And I say this, in all this, nations forgetting God, I've got good news. God doesn't forget his people. The Bible says, as he always sustains his people. Deuteronomy 31, 6, be strong and of good courage. Fear not nor be afraid of them. Preacher, how can you say that on, on camera hoping the governor's watching because of that verse right there? Because of who lives in me. Be strong, be of good courage, fear not, nor be afraid of them. For the Lord thy God, he it is that doth go with thee. He will not fail thee nor forsake thee. Can I say? God's always sustained his people. Now throughout the Bible we find there are some who may have to endure hardship. There are some who may have to endure harassment from a health department. They need to get right with God too. There are some who have to maybe endure some heartache. But the psalmist said in Psalms chapter 30, verse 4, Sing unto the Lord, O ye saint of his, and give thanks at the remembrance of his holiness. For his anger endureth but a moment. In his favor is life. Weeping may endure for a night. But joy cometh in the morning. I could not get this old hymn off my heart this week. It's not in our songbook. I wish it was. I sing it in some meetings that I go to from time to time. It says this. In times like these, you need a Savior. In times like these, you need an anchor. Be very sure, be very sure. Your anchor holds and grips the solid rock. In times like these, you need the Bible. 
in times like these oh be not idle be very sure be very sure your anchor holds and grips the solid rock this rock is Jesus yes he's the one this rock is Jesus the only one I'm very sure I'm very sure my anchor holds and grips the solid You're saved. Hallelujah. No, oh, maybe going through it. Don't lose heart. He'll never leave thee nor forsake thee. And when this passes, we get to glory someday. This won't even be a memory. But what will be is all that we've trusted him for. Keep looking up, friend. Keep trusting. Keep being anchored into the solid rock. Oh, brighter days are ahead. If you're not saved, this nation's on its way to hell. Don't let it drag you there. Put your faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. Give us a call at the church. We'll be happy to talk to you and tell you how you can be saved. Oh, read Romans chapter number 10. That'll help you. John chapter 3. That'll help you. Yep. Give your heart and life to Jesus. Amen. You'll change your life. Save your soul. And it don't matter which direction this old world's headed. You'll be headed to glory. I trust that this has been a help to you today. Let's pray. Our Father, we bless you. Thank you for the word of God. Lord, I hate that America's headed to hell. I love America. It's the greatest nation on the face of the earth. But Lord, it's become not even a shadow what she was. God, I pray for our president. I pray you'd undergird him and you'd strengthen him. I pray for our vice president. The same. I pray for any of our leaders that aren't saved. They'd get saved. And they'd start legislating righteously. And they'd do what they were uh, uh, appointed to do. And that was uh, stand in the gap on behalf of God, uh, God's people in America to make a difference. Lord, we could change the world in America if we just truly become a Christian nation again. God, I pray for liberals and those elected officials that are standing against you and against the church and against the Bible. I pray as uh, uh, David pray that you'd put them in fear and God that you'd uh, 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 work in their hearts and you would uh, uh, bring the weight of Almighty God and your fierceness and your anger upon them till they start doing what's right. God, I pray they'd get saved before it's everlasting too late. I pray for any that's uh, watched this broadcast today, not saved, they'd get saved. And I pray you'd comfort your people You'd strengthen them. You'd help them set their affection on things above. God, I pray that we truly, once again, would see revival and see a move of God like we've never seen before. Lord, throughout this land, there are churches that are under attack. There are preachers under attack. God's people are under attack. I pray that you'd rise up and you'd defend your people. You said, vengeance is mine. I will repay, saith the Lord. And God, you do a great work in this day before you come. Lord, we bless you. We praise you. Thank you for all those that t tuned in and watched today. Thank you for your, your church and your people. Thank you for your, your blessings, your help, and your strength. Get glory to your glorious name. We'll thank you for it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank Thanks to listeners like you, IBC has had over 100,000 views on our YouTube channel. If you haven't already, subscribe today. And as always... Thanks for listening.